guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs, and thank you for watching this video. Uh, today is a Cinema 4D tutorial, and I'm going to be kind of working on the materials aspect of the whole program, uh, how to kind of set them up, and um, kind of a common problem I understand a lot of you would have been occurring. Uh, so first things first, we've got our basic Cinema 4D screen loaded, nothing added. Uh, you always want to do is want to go to render settings, render and render settings, uh, go down to output. And you want to change the actual dimensions. I'm going to change to 1280 by 720. I'm going to use. I'm just going to do all frames. I'm going to change the frame weight to 60, so you can maybe so it's a bit crisper. And change it to a QuickTime Movie. And uh, I'm just going to specify the desktop, like so. In fact, I'll call it something. I call it Tut. Now, obviously, this is this. That's how to set up your scene for the for the beginning most part but for this tutorial because we're doing materials you really want to get the best idea of what we're creating so I'm going to go to effect ambient occlusion and effect global illumination on the global illumination tab I'm going to go to the irradiance cache and go to low and low this gives it a speedy render when you quickly quickly look at them as opposed to taking 15 minutes and realizing that it doesn't look like you just want it to and then the ambient occlusion you want to go to maximum ray length Pull it up to 145, and just add a bit of contrast, about 30. Okay, so we've got our render setting set up, and we're good to go. So it's going to go to MoGraph and Text Object, and this is going to be our text. Now, just say you're kind of going for a grungy sort of text. I kind of maybe get yourself in a bit more of a feel. In fact, I'll type grunge for the sake of it. I'm going to change the font to Reboard, which is, I suppose, can look like a kind of grungy font kind of increase the depth to 100 like so go to caps just add a fillet cap uh, fillet cap to both both the end and the start and add the steps to 4 and the steps to 4 leaving the radius at 5 now here we go we've got the basic text set up here and if you render it you know obviously that's no in fact it won't render but that's no good as you know because it's just some plain white text now I have grunge here, this is my tab, I just typed in grunge, google images, I went to large and these are all different options I'm going to choose, what image shall I choose, I'll choose this image first one, and then you go, want to go right click, save image as I'm going to save it to the desktop, I've got quite a few things on my desktop at the moment, it's kind of untidy, I used to call it tut and add loads of t's because uh, I'm just cool like that and you want to go to, in fact what do you want to do, yeah you want to go to your desktop Okay, and uh, what you want to do is you want to see this tut here. You want to click and hold, and you want to drag it in. Someone talking about Facebook. Drag it into the materials panel, and you want to click no to this little pop up. Now, if you just go ahead and add this on the text, and just say you kind of just click render it here. I need to add in a light first of all, and if I render it here. It may take, <coughs> sorry about that. It may take a bit. You notice this that's not grunge. It kind of goes at the back and it's kind of going across ways and it's not applied to itself to the front. And that's really what you're going for. So to do this, all you want to do is you want to on this layer, you want to go to this little little thumbnail up here and to change the selection to C C1, and that applies it just to the front. And then you want to change the uh, projection to flat so this makes it flat so if we go ahead and render this out here it may take a while you'll see that you've really got the kind of grunge going up there uh, one problem with this uh, kind of the common main problem here is what the text is white in the background you still want that to be like grungy like and you notice that there's a big line going across here suggesting that it kind of uh, it's like repeating itself so it, it doesn't fill the whole text so it repeats itself so to kind of get rid of this so it kind of fills up the whole text go to the tiles and I just want to lower it, I'll go to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 like so and that still doesn't do anything go to the thumbnail again and uh, I hate that pop up, always happens when I'm recording you want to go to the X offset and you know you can maybe just decrease it or increase it just so it kind of goes past it that little line because it kind of matches itself up in the middle by default and you see it's just rendering here uh, that's looking good you got the text there 
And we're going to go for the back bit now. So you want to go to this little thumbnail down here. Control, jag, control and drag, which makes a new copy. Apply this new copy to the text object. And you want to delete. Then you want to swap them over. So the first one behind it, like so. And so the first one that you made should be second in queue, which means it's on top. So if we go and render this out here, you should see that the, it now fills in the back, uh, as you see there. And that's looking good. You know, that looks a lot more realistic. you really got some good looking text there. Uh, but one more thing that we could do is we could change how it kind of, the kind of area that it's going in this backdrop text. So click on that little thumbnail, change the, what is it now, the first one rather, the one that's kind of not on the front panels. And you want to change the protection to cubic. So now render this out one more once more time. Probably would have been easier not to have glue illumination. Probably got been quicker render. But as you see there, it kind of looks like it's in a 3D text, and that is looking a lot better. That is looking a lot better than it originally was, and it kind of really does look quite realistic. Maybe with some with some professional lights added there, it could look it could look really effective. And you know, for the most part, that's kind of that is it. But one more thing we could do is on the caps, you know, maybe add a bit of shine. You notice there was a kind of a little bit of shine going on, but maybe increase this a bit more. So control drag another one and double click this, go to specular, add the width and the height up, and go to luminance, add the opacity down to about 13 between well 50, 20 or under I'd say, and go to reflection and change this to about 15 also. Now you want to add this on, you want this to be third in line, this wants to be third, like so, and it will overlay. Then go to the selection and choose R1. When choosing the selection, you do want to make sure it's in capitals. And there you go, you kind of see already that it's kind of given a bit of shine. Uh, it's probably, that'll probably be better for maybe a bit of, um, if you're kind of working on some cr like dark grunge metal text. It doesn't look that good here, can maybe tone it down a bit. Uh, maybe the luminance put down to about five and the reflection put down to about six or so maybe the specular dragged us these bad boys down uh, I've rendered that out and uh, here we go and that's looking quite good maybe still a bit too much but that's how to kind of create some grunge textures in cinema 4d uh, thanks for watching this video well in fact this doesn't have to be grunge textures you know that's just how to kind of use images on text. I know if you noticed from the beginning when you just added on it didn't look right uh, but no that's how it's kind of a depth to your text to make it look a lot more realistic. I'll tell you what one more thing before I end this video I'm gonna go to the one that's on the front what's the front one? The one that's got C1 yeah so that's selected here so it's the first one and if you go to color you could choose a color for example if I wanted to be a bit more tinted blue go to blue, nothing would change, go to mix mode and multiply. This is like the Photoshop blending options, obviously the image will be on top of the color so it doesn't show, however if you change the blend modes to multiply it will kind of compromise and mix them both in together. So go to multiply, you know that may be a bit strong, this might not even look that good. I haven't actually tried this, I haven't run through this tutorial before making it, but it's all about being spontaneous. But yeah, you kind of get the gist of it. Maybe if you wanted it blue, but you wanted that kind of a texture with the kind of effects, just do the same for the next one. Uh, so uh, I think that's about all. I think I covered everything on how to make these kind of textures. Uh, any questions, please post it in the comment section below. If I don't reply, I'm sure someone else will. Uh, but no, thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you learned something. Uh, go create some in-depth 3D text, and I'll see you guys soon.